Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Boss Coin YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about ASIC mining, more specifically Bitcoin mining and how you can increase your Bitcoin mining profits. No, real talk. Why does B keep throwing up shit? Well, these little guys are the Bitcoin currency. They're block rewards for securing the network. That's a reward. B here will spit them up every 10 minutes for years to come. Now they're off to the miners as payment for securing the network through cryptographic hashing. In this way, unaffiliated parties from all over the world are incentivized to support the network, not break it down. Not just ASIC boost, but we're going to talk about some custom firmware. We're going to go over ASIC mining viruses, which if you don't know is a thing, which although why not, you know, running rampant, it, it is actually still out there. And the last thing I want is someone to take control of my miner and up the settings and here I go and have a fire hazard. So let's go ahead and jump into today's video. All right guys, so first things first. If you don't know about ASIC Boost, it was once called an exploit and it got a really bad rap in the beginning because basically just the way it was being framed. But the fact of the matter is, is that ASIC Boost increases SHA-256, AKA Bitcoin. SHA-256 is the Bitcoin mining algorithm, which is uh, completely dominated by ASIC miners, application specific integrated circuit miners. So, you know, like the AMP miners you commonly think of, an S9, a T9 Plus, an S17, and so forth. So, with all that in mind, the uh, ASIC boost will give you 20 to 30% more efficiency. Obviously, it varies, and it is not only Bitmain and their AMP miners that utilize this technology, many of the other, really all of the other top uh, Bitcoin miner manufacturers were slash are utilizing this technology now ASIC boost has essentially become the norm and if you have been out of mining for a little bit then I'm going to explain how to get up to speed on that and update your miner actually in today's video along with a whole lot of other stuff. Bitmain eventually released the ASIC boost firmware for their miners publicly but they had it privately for quite some time imagine that Bitmain always doing what is absolutely best for Bitmain and probably what is not best for the rest of the world including their clients but again on the side, sort of. This firmware, don't use it, okay? That's why I'm bringing it up. While this will enable ASIC boost, this is gonna lock down your firmware and you're gonna have a bad time if you wanna change it. So I'm gonna go over a couple other options in this video and uh, a little bit more on that here in a second. But before that, I wanna talk about ASIC viruses, okay? So this is like some little grabby, catchy title on this video. There are ASIC viruses out there, not incredibly common and really more something to be worried about if you were a mining farm. And they're more often a product of negligence as opposed to just creeping their way onto your ASIC miner. It's not like you're browsing, you know, weird uh, or maybe promiscuous videos with your ant miner like you would on your personal pc which is a common place where people have been infected on their computer before this article is from bixbit who are makers of immersion cooling technology and some firmware which i'll get to here in a second but in this article they sum it up pretty well that uh, these hackers infect users with devices with malware which is programmed to transfer the reward to their workers so basically they're trying to infect your miner and redirect the hash power to their wallet some hackers manage to earn more than one btc per day only due to the viruses on other people's computers so that's obviously a lot especially in the current market for bitcoin as it's you know crushed through uh, 10,000 again so in early 2019 a spread of malicious firmware was detected which offered to increase the antminer s9 overclocking potential to 18 terahash a second after activating the firmware the trojan virus Blackmailer Hunt Hant demanded a ransom of 10 Bitcoin by threatening to overheat the device with its further disruption. Uh, okay, uh, but anyway, I'm hot and I'm gonna attack your ant miner unless you infect more machines or you send 10 VTCs to support. I will stop attacking. What's what is pretty alarming is that uh, saying I will turn off your ant miner's fan and overheat protection, which will cause you to burn down your machine and burn down the house. You can overheat a miner and also increase the electric consumption on it, which would become a fire hazard, especially if you are pushing the boundaries with your current electric usage. And like say if you're running at 120 volt already, uh, you know you could be kind of walking that line to begin with. This virus transferred over $8,000 in Bitcoin mined during a, a specific day to a third party address in an instance where this virus infected over 4,000 devices in a Bitcoin mining farm. Luckily, 
the uh, farm owner was able to turn off his machines and he had to take an SD card and reflash them basically one by one. Talk about an absolute nightmare. Apparently it took four days. I'm sure he had some help there. And that's basically the rudimentary way to solve that. Thankfully, some people are making this a priority in their firmware development. For example, Bixbit, who sponsored this video, but more importantly, they actually make something pretty cool. And you guys know I wouldn't say that if I didn't honestly think it was pretty cool. We've I've had sponsors sponsored videos here on the channel where I kind of slam the sponsor because their stuff's really just not that cool. But this is something cool, so let me explain. Basically, this firmware it was it's kind of centered around immersion cooling, but it has much use beyond that. And with my uh, plans to mess around with some immersion cooling this year, this is one of the first steps in you know just researching more and looking at some immersion cooling software because basically with immersion cooling, and that's where you dunk your miner in some cooling fluid like this. And in this, basically you're going to get a higher cooling potential so you can overclock it more, which will create more heat, but that's okay because you're able to dissipate, basically get rid of that additional heat. And thus, you can have a device hashing higher. If you've never updated firmware, and if you have some really old firmware on your devices you really need to just to get ASIC boost um, involved with this, all you have to do is just click download. You don't want to share your greedy, and then you download the version. This is available for the S9 and T9 Plus. I'm going to be showing a T9 Plus in this video, but it is more beneficial with a S9, essentially just because it's just kind of a better machine. So I already see, you can already see I've already done this, but you can click save there and it will download to your computer. Once you do that, you will go over and you will log into your miner. So you'll just need the IP address associated with your ant miner. And from there you'll go to the upgrade tab. It looks a little bit different. I don't have a stock uh, firmware uh, one handy right now. But basically you will just go to the flash firmware and it's called that on the Antminer inter interface. And from there you can browse and then go down to select the firmware. I generated a backup, which I recommend you do as well. It just literally says like generate backup or you know create backup archive on uh, your device because why not? Uh, it's a good thing to have. But yeah, so then you just click this, click open, it'll come here and you click flash and then it will do the rest. It will even keep your configuration in here. So for example, I'm mining on slush pool. For that, you need a username and a worker name and your password can be anything. So naturally I put anything. And that's how you set up the firmware on this device. But you're probably wondering why? Why would I do this? Well, obviously there's gonna be a couple reasons. Uh, just for the record, it gives you a ton more information, which is pretty cool. And it compiles into a pretty nice dash interface. I mean, you want to look at your hash ports. We can come in here and we can dive in and we can look at the chips. This is very important if you're diagnosing something, you know, some kind of issue. This will save you a lot of time and then in turn, you know, could potentially save you money there. They have a lot of really nice preset configurations and not only give you the tear hash, but also the estimated power consumption. This is also going to be power consumed on 240 volt. And I believe this is power consumed without the fans in use because this firmware is ultimately aimed at immersion cooling. For example, on this firmware, I'm using a little bit over 1100 watts on 120 volt. And this is with a APW3++ power supply. They did clarify for me on 240 volt, I could be using the same power supply to run on the 1580 watt setting with AB on, which is ASIC boost. And th this is what that same setting would look like on an S9, which would push you up to 16 and a half terahash. A, a very, very minor bump in your power consumption there a little bit less than 300 watts additional and you're getting three more terahash a second and that's all based off the standard and minor s9 that consumes about you know 13 23 or so watts and hashes at 13 and a half terahash a second they do have a dev fee just to clarify that and their dev fee which is 1.8 percent you can do the math and any way you slice it you're probably going to be earning more to compensate for this developer fee so again, if you're so against that, then don't use it, you know, perfectly fine. But I really like the ability to be able to fine tune your device. For example, maybe I don't have enough, that much electric left. So I could put this, I could scale it down. Or maybe I really want to turn this thing up and 
dunk it in an immersion tank. Well, guess what? I can do that too. And there are absolutely some settings to be able to do that. I can put a bigger power supply on this machine or use two power supplies. And then I could really crank this thing up assuming I have the proper cooling there. They also have an auto tune setting, which is pretty cool. Basically what this does is it's going to evaluate your hash boards and it's gonna find better settings. If you have a red chip, if you have an orange chip, and you know this is gonna be based off hardware errors and temperature, they're going to probably reduce your frequencies. One thing I would like to note is out of the box with my old firmware, my frequency was running at 550. And on this firmware, I tried some higher spec settings and also this is a little bit of a lower setting and the frequency adjusted accordingly with that. And you can see the hash boards. You can see that you know this one right here in particular is a little questionable. That's kind of, I mean, it's getting a vast majority of errors. And while that's actually not really impacting the performance here too much, that, that is something I could go in here and fine tune if I want and even just have the ability to. Because by the way, if you didn't know this, you can't even overclock this if you wanted to with the Antminer firmware anymore because they've just been locking all their stuff down. That's pretty annoying. If you have a mining farm, this is the coolest feature by far. Okay, so if I had 100 devices, I could put the IP address in starting point and then the ending IP. So say like, you know, 192.168.1 from 80 to 180. And with that, I could put the same settings I have on this device onto all of the rest, which if you've ever operated a farm of really like any size more than a couple rigs, that is really cool and that is really convenient. And that alone, you know, could be worth something to very many people. So I've been talking a ton about the firmware, but let's look at the actual profitability and how this software has impacted it. Again, I'm using a T9 Plus. It's nothing to really brag about in today's age. It's basically an obsolete machine, but it is relevant to the software. And I wanted to see how profitable or really if it could redeem any sort of profitability for this device I had. So this is what it was hashing on 120 volt, you know, with the stock settings. It was doing 10 and a half terahash a second and it was consuming about 16 to 66 watts, which is a lot and a little bit higher than it's supposed to, but that's what the machine was doing. I'm paying about 12 cents per kilowatt hour um, right here, you know, st standard US electric. And I bumped it down to 9.4 terahash a second. And you can see, again, just to clarify, on 10.5, I'm losing a dollar and a quarter a day, right? $1.26. And so we go down to 9.4 and we drop the power consumption to like 11.20. And with that, I increased my daily profitability by a dollar and 20 cents. And granted, I'm still losing six cents a day, but this is a very old machine here. Let's say I had a proper setup, right? And we click over here, we go to the mining profiles. And with that, we could be using the 1580 watts. And you know, that, that's, that is what's recommended for my setup here. And I'd be hashing at 13.8 terahash a second. So let's take 13.8 and a 1580 power consumption, right? Well, I would be making 14 cents a day. And that is a pretty big increase over six cents a day, but that is a massive increase over losing a dollar 26 a day. And let's look at the S9 numbers. We got a stock S9 doing 13 and a half terahash a second and 13, I think it's 13.23 watts consumed, right? And where you again that's my electric rate and the pool fee i'm paying its lush pool is two percent so i make about 80 cents a day and that's stock setup if i move to the 1590 watt consumption which would be good for the apw3 plus plus i would be hashing 16 and a half terahash a second any way you look at it that's a pretty big increase from 80 cents to a dollar and five cents and yes there is a 1.8 percent or really two percent death fee right but that is much more than a 2% increase. So it's more than making up for it. Anyway, you slice it, this firmware not only gives you better insight to what your device is doing, how it's performing, better for troubleshooting. It also gives you an ability to spam your config a bunch, you know, through your whole, you know, small farm, big farm, whatever. It's an IP address range that can be pretty large. And it's increasing profitability much more than the dev fee. So again, I'm not trying to sound like I'm shilling this thing. 
it's just worth it. Any way you look at it, this was better than what I was using. The firmware I had on here, because I hadn't, hadn't been using this T9 recently, sadly, it's just uh, more of a heater than a miner these days. But just this uh, old firmware didn't even have ASIC boost, okay? Just enabling ASIC boost, and that's not really hard. There's Bitmain firmwares that can do that easily for you now, not previously, but now it can. So this will get you up to speed with ASIC boost. It'll let you see inside of your miner. You can spam the config if you want or need to, and you have the preset profiles in there so you can overclock to your heart's desire something that you couldn't do on the firmware i had on my t9 plus and more importantly it's pretty beneficial to the s9s here and there's a lot of s9s out there and while s9s have doubled on their way to tripling in price recently you can see right now they're selling on ebay for 350 really more like 400 dollars uh that's what this one sold for was about 400 dollars with shipping and you can see a t9 plus over here for 200 bucks with uh, $22 shipping. I imagine something like this will go for maybe 250. It doesn't have a power supply, so maybe it'll be less, but in, in this market, a lot of things sell for more than they should. So ultimately guys, the way I feel about this is if it'll benefit you, why not? And I'm not afraid of a developer fee if I make out more in the end. And that's really what it comes down to. It's just like everything else, it's a numbers game. If this software gives you more insight, more control, and more profitability, makes sense to me, literally. And well, I guess with my T9 Plus, it loses less sense. But with an S9, I'd actually be making some sense. And uh, maybe, maybe that should be my goal, my 2019 goal, to finally make some sense, right? Maybe in both senses. That's too much, I'm, I'm sensing too hard now. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that this helps your Bitcoin mining profitability. And if it does, please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Let me know what you liked. Let me know what you didn't like. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If I didn't say this stuff already, I can't remember what I just said because I never make sense. But I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching.